Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be looking at SQL, specifically SQLite. Let's get started. So first off, we're going to be grabbing uh, some data that we're going to be using over the series. And I'm just going to uh, paste this on in here. We're going to be uh, following uh, Thomas Nieldman's um, book. Okay, so this is O'Reilly uh, from O'Reilly Media, um, and it's getting started with SQL. And so I'm going to go on and get clone um, that repository. And then I'm going to go on and... Uh, CD into that and if we take a look here what's actually inside of this is a bunch of um, just small SQLite databases now one thing that you guys are probably saying is alright why, why am I doing SQLite and not Postgres or MySQL or uh, whatever else okay well the thing is, is that uh, SQLite's on everything okay it's definitely one of the most um, available okay it's on every machine basically um, and then probably later on, if if the series at least uh, takes off with uh, SQL itself, then we'll maybe move on to Postgres, MySQL, and other different flavors um, as time permits. But for now, we're just going to stick with SQLite. Um, so again, please, I don't want to uh, go over it too much, okay? We're just going to do this just to get, get a taste of SQL and get down some of the SQL basics. So again, we've already retrieved our data. So let's go on and... Um, also talk about maybe um, some things that we're going to be using in here. So uh, if I go on and open up and I want to um, actually change this up and let me see here, where do I want to go here? Um, I'm going to actually go on and open up my files here and I'm going to actually go on and delete that file. And let's see where we want to go. And I want to actually show you guys some stuff here. So let me change my view here a little bit. And I want to also show my status bar. So one thing is some extensions. So if we just type in SQLite, okay, um, I'm going to be using just the SQLite extension. All of these, all of these are actually pretty darn good extensions. Okay, um, I happen to use the SQL tools a lot as well. But for for now and for um, the, the series at least, I'm going to be using um, this uh, this extension here, this just SQLite, um, because again, it's relatively easy to use, and it has kind of all the all the stuff we want without going overboard on with the add-ons. So let's go on and maybe just get uh, started with some of this. So let's I'm going to assume that you guys have installed uh, that, and then you've kind of come back and you've uh, started kind of playing with us. So one of the first things that we can do is since we actually already have, um, we're, we're inside of our database uh, file system here, we can, um, let's see here, what do we want to maybe work on? Um, let's go with the rocks on metals. Let's, I can right click on this now and you can see here that we can open the database and it'll pop up down here in this explorer light. Uh, this uh, SQLite Explorer and then you can actually just go on and click this little icon here for a new query um, and it will actually create up a new query for you I'm just gonna leave it um, let me save this and call this um, uh, select statements dot SQL because we're gonna be talking about just select statements today um, and this here this is this is just um, uh, a comment in here we don't really need it I'm going to go on and uh, delete that. So let's go on and do some of our first uh, selections. Okay, so we can do uh, select, and if we want everything, we use this star from. Okay, and here I'm going to use uh, customer. Now, what that actually is is that we have this database down here, this rocks on metals, and if we look, let me close these so that we can actually see all of them. Inside of this database, we actually have several tables. We have the customer table, the customer order table, the product table, and then we have a, a couple other things in here that we, we don't really uh, necessarily need to worry about, like example behind schedule and the customer revenue. We probably won't be talking about those a lot. So this is grabbing everything from this, this customer uh, table. Okay, so select all from customer, the customer table. So if we go on and we want to run this, um, if I click the run, okay, and again, um, it's usually uh, Shift Command Q or something, but 
I have that saved to quit everything in my files, and so I saved it up um, the key uh, strokes to just uh, command enter to run the whole file. Um, so that's just going to depend on you, but it'll ask you to choose a database. I'm going to connect this to the uh, uh, Rexon Metals database, and then that will grab everything for us. So I'm going to close that off so that we can see this. And this here, you can see it grabbed all of the, it grabbed the whole table, it grabbed everything. And it's nice and displaying it out to the side. Um, again, I am using uh, VS Code today. Uh, again, just I'm just doing it because we're doing SQLite, but again, if you're doing Postgres, it just depends on what you're comfortable with. Okay, we're uh, focusing completely on the language right now, and we're not really working um, with using any fancy tricks or anything else. We're just talking about the basics of the language. So here we've kind of, uh, again, I'm going to break this down a little bit more, maybe with a, maybe a little bit more complex statement. Okay, so if we want, we can do select, and let's say that I want to grab in from this customer table, okay, I'm just doing this just so that we can see it real quick. We have customer ID, we have name, region, street address, city, state, zip. So let's say that I want to just grab each customer name, and let me go on and zoom this in for us, and I'm going to turn off the activity bar so we have a little bit more space. And so I want to grab the customer ID, and I also want to grab the name from the customer table, okay? And I'll run this, and then we can see here well, that it grabbed just our customer ID and the name, okay? So you can already see here how nice this is to be able to grab things. One, it all of our commands in here look like they're made out in plain English, okay? And I can uh, we can even write them in multiple lines here Again, this semicolon here dictates um, whether or not it is, um, whoops, uh, whether or not it is uh, uh, the end of a statement or not. So the next thing that we want to do is maybe talk about, um, let's maybe grab another uh, uh, another table, okay? So we've grabbed, again, we're connected to the Rexon Metals database, okay? And we have a collection of tables. Um, and I'll, I'll refer you guys to um, a, another video whenever we t actually talk about what relational databases are and whatnot. But w again, let's just stick with the code for today. So uh, let's select all from, and let's do the product table. Oh, and I keep hitting that autocomplete there. All right, so here we grabbed, and we can see here that we have only the product ID, the description, and the price. That's all that we have about the um, the products, okay? Um, so now let's suppose that we want um, to maybe do a little bit of math, okay? Because this is the price, all right? Now, that is a little, mm, let's just say, kind of useless in some instances, okay? Because we want to actually say something like a select, and let's say we want the taxed price. So we want the, uh, the product ID. We want, let's say, the description and we want the price but then we also and I'm gonna put this on a new line here and we want the price multiplied by the tax rate and so um, my area has a really high tax rate so I'm gonna say 1.1 and say as we're able to give it an alias okay as taxed price all right and then say from product Okay, and we can run this. And we see now that we have a new table created, okay? It has the product ID, which we asked for. It has the description, which we asked for. It has the price, and then it now has this aliased text price, okay? So one thing that's nice about this is that it did not, it, it actually created everything for us, and this is in relatively plain English whenever we are running these. Um, well, maybe put that like that so that we can actually see everything together. So now you can see that we have all everything in here. And uh, one thing that you may notice again is that this is actually dynamically calculated. Okay, so when we're doing a selection query. So this column is not stored in the table, but rather it's calculated and then displayed for us. Okay, and that is beautiful. Okay, it, it takes down it takes down a lot of space. Okay. Um, 
that we're and we're going to be able to do. Now, we also will later on, we'll also sh show you guys how to round things. Again, I would like all of these to maybe two decimal places. Maybe we want to add in some uh, string modifications as well. Uh, but again, this is this is very useful. And now here's one thing, okay? So this is price and then text price. Maybe we want to actually say that we also want this to be something like as untaxed price so that we make it uh, very distinct. Maybe our boss, whenever we're doing our reporting, has some very stringent titles that he wants for the columns. And we just run this and we see here that, again, we can alias these. And again, you can export this as a CSV, JSON, whatever else. Maybe if you want to have this on a back end and you don't want to actually use the database or your boss wants it as a CSV, JSON, TSV, Excel, whatever. Um, so again, this is all very useful. And as I said, maybe we want to round this to maybe two decimal places, this text. Um, so we can use the round function. Um, now you've noticed that most of the time here I'm having everything um, uppercased. It is traditional to have at least the functions. So the select, as, and from are usually uppercase. Now the names of the um, variables, okay, and the names of the um, of the tables are case sensitive, okay? Now this round, I'm doing this, um, if I do round, okay, that actually works as well. Let me run this and we can see here that it rounded everything. So if you want to keep that up, but I have a tendency to put my functions um, in under, um, in lowercase, okay? Um, it just, it's honestly, it's probably a bad habit of mine. I will try my best to put everything in uppercase when needed. Um, so, but again, here you can see that we can use external, not external functions, but functions as well to create up um, some prettier tables as we're going on. Um, so a couple things that we can do. Um, so here we actually saw that we used uh, the multiplication symbol, the star. We can also add, subtract, divide, and also use the mod operator um, so that we can get calculate up the remainder. Um, while we're talking about select statements, let's go through maybe one more type of thing that we can do, and that is a uh, text concatenation, okay? Maybe, um, let's go on and let me go back and let's grab the, uh, let's grab um, everything from uh, the customer table for now. Let me run this so that we can actually look at it. And again here we have, for example, uh, customer ID, name, region, street address, city, state, and zip. Now, this is great and all. It's very, uh, very clean data. It's tidy data. But it's relatively useless to us as human beings right now, okay? And yes, we can read it very easily, but let's say that you want to use this as a mailing list, okay? And you want to send this off to um, a program which goes to the printer and it prints up all of the labels and to ship out all of your invoices, for example. Well, then you need to be able to concat this uh, name, street address, city, state, zip, all into a nice text format. So how would we go about doing that? Well, first off, let's grab everything that we would want from that. So we want name, okay? We want city, and now here's the thing. When you want to cacat, you use the pipe operator, so two pipes, and then I'm going to put in here a comma, a space, and another uh, apostrophe, and uh, a pipe operator. Now. I'm also going to uh, add in state here, and I'm going to say as location, okay, from our customer's table. Now, one thing here, okay, is some of you are going to run into problems depending on which uh, SQL flavor you're using, okay? Sometimes they require you to have a single quote, sometimes they require you to have a double quote. Okay, so again, we're using SQLite, so single quotes are okay with us. Um, sometimes it'll be a big no-no for you. So you'll have to just kind of uh, see what flavor you're using and look it up. So when we run this now, 
now we actually have in here uh, something like um, the in, uh, the name okay with the location but the location is actually in a proper format okay such as a uh, uh, city state now again we could do this as well as making um, a we can add in something like a street address as well so we can say let's do uh, one more here to make it a little bit more complex and do like a shipping address okay so uh, we want to select name street address and we're going to put in whoops a space in here we're going to concat and I have a tendency to mess that up we're going to concat here we want a city we're going to add in our pipe we're going to add in a comma and a space then we're going to also concat in here we're going to do state and I'm going to just put this all in here with another space in here concat uh, with the zip zip and we'll say as here uh, ship address okay uh, and then here from customer then we run this and again we're going to get in here um, a nice name with the shipping address and again we could put this in a lot of different ways we could put in uh, actually have an, in some of the formatting in here as well but again this is just something that we are able to do very quickly with uh, SQL select statements now again what we've covered today we have covered our select statements they are probably the most common SQL operation so make sure that you are comfortable with it um, it also retrieves and transfers, uh, transforms data from the table, and it's going to do that without affecting the table itself, okay? It's going to have our tables kind of protected in this way. Now, we're also learned how to select columns and write some expressions. So within expressions, we can also use operators such as the plus sign, uh, the uh, minus sign, the equal sign, division sign, multiplication sign as well. We've also talked about rounding, some basic math in SQL, as well as concatenation. So if you guys like this, please comment, subscribe, hit that like button, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.